Ever since Richard Owen's discovery of dinosaurs, they have made a cultural impact so astounding that some dinosaurs have become more famous than modern animals and celebrities, especially when talking about dinosaurs such as Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus, thanks to them being in some of the first and most popular dinosaur media out there. In today's video, thanks to a recent poll I did, I will be covering an apex predator of early Cretaceous North America that I haven't really seen anyone make a video on, Acrocanthosaurus atokensis, a Toka County's high-spined lizard that ruled North America before Tyrannosaurus rex. Also, I think I should note that even though I believe it would be more accurate to call them vertebrae, I will refer to its vertebrae as spines throughout this video, since it's easier and quicker. Despite first being discovered in 1940, what is considered the holotype was found in the year 1950 after an excavation led by John Willis Stovall and Langton Wan Jr. in Atoka County, Oklahoma, USA. This large carnivore stood out from others due to the unique feature it possessed on its back in the form of very tall vertebrae, which gave it its name, meaning high-spined lizard of Atoka, or Atoka's high-spined lizard. This led to harsh debate over where to put the animal in the carnivorous dinosaur family tree. Some argued it was a part of Allosauridae, whilst paleontologist Alfred Sherwood Romer put it in Megalosauridae, and some thought it was related to Spinosaurus, which is easy to see why, since the vertebrae would cause some people to think there's a link between the two animals. Anyway, Acrocanthosaurus was actually a member of Carcodontosauridae, which is with Allosauridae in the subgroup Allosauria meaning that those that thought it was in Allosauridae were closer to the answer of this question than their peers. Most Carcharodontosaurids were fairly large animals, with Acro being one of those famous examples of this, other members being Carcharodontosaurus, Gigononosaurus, and Mapusaurus. Whilst its southern and eastern relatives might be equal or larger than it, Acrocanthosaurus was still a respectable animal when talking about size, with weight estimates floating around 5 and 7 metric tons, making Acrocanthosaurus comparable in size to modern elephants. Size wasn't the only thing this animal had going for it. Like its southern and eastern relatives, Acrocanthosaurus atokensis had straight, serrated, blade-like teeth designed to cut through flesh which is a complete contrast to that of Tyrannosaurids like Tyrannosaurus rex and Tarbosaurus batar, which were designed for gripping prey and crushing bone. This adaptation allowed Acrocanthosaurus to better hunt large sauropods such as Sauroposeidon, which it lived with, by causing the animal to bleed out. Alongside that, it also had a bite force hovering around 3,700 and 4,000 psi, making it slightly more powerful than that of a saltwater crocodile. Getting back to the spines of Acrocanthosaurus for a minute, it's not really known why it had these. Tons of theories have been thrown around and debated. One thing I came across even suggested, and I quote, perhaps employed it as an intrasignaling device, say, flushing bright pink to signal the approach of prey. Don't ask me where they got that idea, but I will admit it sounds, uh, unique. These spines were massive, by the way, with some being a foot tall. One theory also proposed was that it used them to cool down via releasing excess heat from wind passing over it. Another one is that it would have used its spines as an attachment point for a layer of fat that would keep it fed just in case it can't find food, or to appear healthier than others, therefore showing the individual was more worthy of mating with because it had a larger hump of fat on its back, which would demonstrate how well it could hunt. There was even another theory proposed where the spines actually acted as an attachment point for more muscles, similar to bison if I remember correctly. 
Whether or not it used its spines for something will probably remain a mystery for a little while longer, but whether they had a purpose or not doesn't stop us from learning more about this animal. There's at least seven specimens known, and despite the fragmentary nature of these individuals, we do know most of the entire skeleton of the animal. The largest specimen, for anyone wondering, is believed to be 11.5 metres in length, or nearly 38 feet long, making it slightly shorter than Tyrannosaurus, and somewhere between half a metre and 1.5 metres shorter than its relatives Carcharodontosaurus and Giganontosaurus. Alongside this, even though it went extinct roughly 110 million years ago, it was a very widespread animal, with fossils being found in Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and even Maryland. And there's even been footprints found across northeast and southwest Texas attributed to Acrocanthosaurus. Some have even claimed these footprints show it hunting a sauropod, and some prints even show a pack stalking a sauropod. However, this has been argued over. Easy to see why. From what I know, there isn't really much evidence for pack hunting among theropods, and really, if they did pack hunt, think more something like Komodo dragons or random mobs of wannabe gangsters instead of wolves and cultured people. And there's also the possibility the footprints were laid down separately around the same time. Who knows, maybe Acrocanthosaurus might have been an exception, but for now I'll leave it up to the experts to figure this out for themselves. I'm a 16 year old kid on YouTube doing basic research at most, not someone like David Hone or Darren Nash. Heck, even this guy's better than me, even if he can be a bit, um, weird sometimes. Either way, I enjoyed making this video and hopefully I did a good job. I haven't seen much in the way of content produced about it on YouTube, besides basic clips from documentaries and TV shows such as Monsters Resurrected and Dinosaur King. I hope I did Acrocanthosaurus some justice in this video of giving it a YouTube video so that way people can just boot up YouTube to quickly learn some stuff about it, rather than people having to sift through rubbish documentaries like Monsters Resurrected get bombarded with clips from Dinosaur King, or be forced to watch trash fight videos between it and another dinosaur. Anyway, that's about it for this video. The next one should either be Mapusaurus, or possibly a video going over the debate of T-Rex versus Gigantosaurus. Anyway, see you next time.